Hey guys, welcome back to Tony's Phone Collection. We're going to take a look at the LG BX5500. Frozen in the block of ice for 24 hours. Let's go ahead and pause the video and get you over to the sink. There we go. I don't have very good hot water here, so. Jesus, look at that thing. It's like sticking in my hand. Oh. I wonder if it's going to work. I mean, you had the water sitting in there, and then it froze. Oh, there's the back of the phone. That's not gonna work. That's a pretty thick piece of ice. Mm. Come out this side. Turn my light on real quick too. Oh, that one works a little bit there. The back. Look at the back. Look. Or the battery expanded. About to put it in the microwave. No, I'm just kidding. That probably would be very good. Look at that. Woo! It is out. Oh man, it does not look good though. I don't have very high hopes for this. Let's go pull it back off. Get rid of my counter. Oh, it's just ice on the battery. Oh, that's not good. Oh, I can't get the battery out. Oh my god, it's all frozen. Still, huh? Let's go to my bathroom sink real quick. I got all very clean. That's why I use my shade. This water is a lot hotter. Ooh. Oh, look at the screen from the ice. It's on. Oh. Oh man, it's getting hot. Mm -hmm. Alright, see if we can get the battery out now. Yes, we can. Uh, let's go go back to the kitchen sink. Alrighty. Here we are. There's the phone. It's nice and warm now. Let's go ahead and... Let's go blow this turn off. There we go. And we'll see... If it works even being soaked in water, will it still work? Oh no, not the LG. She's a goner. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the desk and we're going to take this back cover off, get the board, and get the board nice and dry. Guys, we're back at the desk. So here is the LG VX. Let's go ahead and dry everything up. Right, so I'm going to give this the fairest chance. I'm going to pull the board out and get the board all nice and dry. We tried to start it up. It didn't work. So let's go ahead and uh, get everything all dried up. The battery smells fine. It doesn't smell like it was leaking. It's a little bit bulged out, but it might have been that one when I put it in. So let's go ahead. And there's still water dripping out of this thing, as you can imagine. It's cold. Look at the water off of that thing. So let's go ahead. We're going to have to pull these little plugs off. Now, I do have some rice, but I don't have it with me, of course. So, I won't be able to put it in rice. But like I said, we'll just take the board out and completely dry it. I'm not sure if it's going to work from being submerged in water that long. 
with the battery and everything turned on, I think that's what's going to short it out. So she might be a lost cause, but we'll try it. Oh, it's missing a screw right there. Let's go and see where it comes apart. Oh, look, the water dripping out of it. Oh, that thing just popped off. Oh, it's all, all over the place. It's falling apart. Let's see if we can get this. Now we may take the LCD off too, but I'm not sure if we're going to go that far yet. Alrighty, so there's the back cover. So there's water in there, obviously. And this one didn't have the um, cover on the charging port either, so like water straight would just rush into it. Let's go ahead and pop the LCD cable off. Looks like it's tucked up under that a little bit so here's going to be the logic board um, it doesn't look bad let's go and pull this metal cover off um, yeah it should come off there's one off if we see any chips that are black or something like that then I didn't hear anything all night, so. Was it wrapped around the charging port? Oh, yeah, a little bit. There we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's not looking good. It looks like something shorted out and got hot a couple times in that metal plate. Uh, looks like right there. I could be wrong, but it looks like something shorted out. We'll come back to this part. It looks like there's some corrosion right there. We'll come back to that though. I'm gonna pull the keyboard out. Not really worried about the, the plastics or anything. Kind of just seeing if we can revive the phone itself. Even if it had LCD damage, I'm trying to see if we can get it to turn back on. Just for the fun. I mean, if it does survive, I guess we'll drop test it or maybe we can give it away if it still works after all this. If it doesn't work, we'll drop test it. If it does work just fine, then we will um, give it away. There we go. I lost what I was thinking there for a second. I'm not too sure on how to get the screen apart. Oh, look at the water in there. I'm not sure, sure how to get the screen apart on this one. I've never taken this one apart, so I'm assuming there's just two screws and I'm assuming it's clipped on, so... I um, usually won't do this, but I'm not going to worry about scratching up the, the housing and stuff, so I'm going to use my metal screwdriver. i um, never do this if you're doing it on a phone, because you will indent the plastic and it'll look like shit, because I've done it a couple times, and I've hated myself for doing it. So, if it's a phone you're keeping, don't use a screwdriver. See, look at that. Ugly it looks now, but you know. I'm pretty sure there's something else that holds this thing on. Nope, not there. Maybe the screen cover comes off. Oh, scratching the shit out. Ow, shit. Stab my finger. We're getting there, guys. I see the screw holes, though, under there, so... This uh, plastic screen has to come off, so... If you're going to keep it, make sure you use a little bit of heat and don't use a screwdriver because it's going to scratch the plastic like I did. Try to be careful not to hit the LCD. Because you put any kind of pressure on that LCD and it's going to be done. There's our plastic screen. Let's set that aside and looky there, there's two screws up there. Glad I didn't keep on pulling, we'll just snap them off. Also, I couldn't imagine it'd be clipped on, but I know there's a couple phones. Some of the Motorola's just have two screws on there and they're, they're clipped on. So you never know with 
with phone manufacturers what they do. And considering the draw test, how that bottom panel came off just being clipped on, I was kind of assuming it might have been. Alrighty, there's inside the cover of the screen, the LCDs. I'll slide all these. I'm gonna kind of do like a pan out of all the parts that we've taken off over here. Alrighty, so here we're gonna have our screen, our LCD assemblies. Um, I worked on a razor one time, and whenever I plugged in the LCD, the keyboard wouldn't light up, and uh, something in the LCD was actually shorting out. So the way I diagnosed it, or diagnosed it was to uh, unplug it, and then I'll hit the power button. Um, and the keyboard light up, but the minute I plug the LCD in, the whole phone would shut off. And it turns out that it was something the LCD was shorting out, so all I had to do was put an LCD in it. So let's see how this camera comes out. It looks like this piece is welded on, or soldered right here. So it looks like we're going to have to break it. Yeah, I mean, just bend it upwards. Oh, nope, broke it off. It shouldn't hurt anything, it's just the ground. So, let's go ahead and dig the speaker out. A lot of these components are just going to be glued in. This is your outside speaker. This is your earpiece speaker right here. And then this other one right here is the vibrator motor. These are usually harder because they don't really have much give in them. There's not really a whole bunch of spots to So I want to keep everything in, intact so we can see, you know, what works and what doesn't work after all this. So I'm going to wipe these down. There's the LCD, you know, it's a little dirty. We'll have to clean it up. So let's go ahead and take this. And a lot of the corrosion starts on the copper connectors, I know, sometimes. So let's go ahead and get this towel out of here real quick. Okay, make sure it ain't hooked on the tripod. So we're going to use... The 91, I still have a whole bunch of the 50% left, but sensing this phone was in the water so much, we're going to go straight 91 on this and see what that can do. And let me see, I wish I had a bowl or something. We're just going to use the towel again, actually. I got rid of it too quickly. I haven't even opened this yet. Just going to pour some alcohol on there. I'm going to scrub it down lightly. Now this works on any phone that you do. Like your iPhones, you take it apart, get the board out, scrub it with alcohol, get all the corrosion off it after you dropped it in water. And, you know, you might be able to save it. I saved an iPhone 4 like this one time. Um, it was one of my friends where I live. He dropped it in the toilet. And I took it all apart and put alcohol on the board, kept it all dry. And it actually turned on still after all that. Look how clean the board looks. There's no water on it no more. I right, said so we're going to let it dry overnight, possibly. All right, so there's the board. We're going to take the housing. And we're not really going to clean the housing particularly, but we're going to clean these uh, connectors on the uh, LCD flex cable. Because those are what's really going to cause the issue going to wipe those down and then we're going to take our LCD it's going to kind of scrub the connectors very lightly get a little bit on this all the connectors and stuff you know I guess that's pretty good just get the connectors 
On an LCD, you want to be very fragile with these things. They're very soft. They're very brittle. They're very thin, so you can easily over grip it or snap it or something if you're not careful. And technically, you should be using like a microfiber or something to wipe these down with because you're going to scratch it. We're just doing this. There's a bunch of water on there still, but we'll let that sit out. And then, and that's really all the electrical parts. You can clean this up if you really wanted to. Just get all the. Oh, I just spilled a whole bunch right there. Just to get a whole bunch of the water out of it. There's one of the power or the camera keys. We're gonna go ahead and try to put this back together and see if maybe we can get lucky. We're not gonna use that battery, just you know, because that battery's probably no good. I mean, you see there's still water in there, but we'll have to take all that off and clean it. But let's go ahead and start reassembling this stuff. Let me grab my microfiber rag and pause the video and go grab it. Alrighty, got my microfiber rag. Let's smack something over here, I thought. Oh, I just smacked the camera key. Oh, there it is. I was like, oh no. So we're gonna grab our housing. Like I said, it doesn't have a, a lens anymore, so that's kind of good. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe this down. There's a bunch of water and stuff on here, so it's not coming off very good. Now, you won't be able to get the water out from underneath the layers and the backlights so I mean there's still gonna be water in here there's nothing you can do about it as you can tell but the best you can is you know what you need to work worry about let's go and set this back in here try not to touch the other side Make sure these are clean too, I forgot. I haven't dried these yet. I'm really hoping this works because this would be kind of cool if this phone literally survived 24 hours in the freezer. Alrighty, so now we got our vibrating motor. We just push it right back in place where it came from. see which way to go yeah it went that way and you're gonna have your two speakers well one speaker and one earphone I put them in place you might want to just kind of damp them down you know grab our front cover clean the LCD housing and then kind of wipe down the camera hole Clip it back on. Grab your two screws up here. And you're going to take your LCD cover. Wipe it down. Now, you can put more glue on here to hold it in securely. I'm not going to put glue on it in case I have to take it back apart or whatever we do. If we drop test it, we will um, probably put a little dab of super glue in there to hold it. But as of right now, I'm not too worried about it. Because we might have to take it back off to, to diagnose it if it's kind of working. Um, a lot of the times when phones come out of water, the LCD backlight shorts out or, or the board, something circuitry on there shorts out. And that's usually why it never works again. So let's go and slap our keypad in there. If you didn't dry it off, you might want to. Oh, I can't wait guys so let's go and grab our board and all these spots go ahead and put alcohol on this and clean up this uh, little shield it's nothing special but go ahead and clean it up while you're there no point in half-assing it at this point
It's so sad that you won't be able to activate 2G phones anymore, though. I mean, it's crazy that a lot of companies, Verizon and et cetera, are getting rid of it. Oh, I thought it would be cool just to go back to a flip phone just for the, the fun, you know? Let's see. I said it looks like it clips around this um, charging port. And then you push down this side and it clips in. That's how that goes back on. Make sure your keypad is setting in right. Let's see. There we go. Take the board. Watch your little cables for your camera and your uh, volume keys and stuff. I thought I would say rockers, but you know, kind of keys. Uh, go ahead and check that connector. Make sure it's dry. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just peel this label because it's really pissing me off right there. There we go. Now I connect it. Push it back down. Let's go ahead and pull this apart real quick and get it dried out, and we can put it back on. these pieces just clip out of here well there it goes I have to go get it now and then this piece uh, looks like it clip, yep it clips out let me go grab that piece right here here it is go ahead and dry it out like I said, the best bet is to leave it overnight, all taken apart, and let all the moisture and the condensation and every little piece of moisture get out before you reassemble it. But, you know, we live life on the edge, so we're going to go for it. Want to make sure your battery terminals have no water in them. Then we're going to take our pieces of plastic and snap them back in. This video is 22 minutes long already. I don't recommend you doing this to your phone either, so don't try it unless you want to possibly lose your phone. Oh, we need the uh, other camera key thing. All right, there it is. Let's see which way it goes. It's a voice command key that fell out. The glue kind of came off of this uh, little backing piece with all the water and stuff, so it's just kind of going to rest against there for now. Nice and clicky. Now we were missing a screw so we're gonna reinstall the three we have it's supposed to be four though and the moment of truth can you revive a phone that was frozen in water for 24 hours you know, it's still got the condensation stuff and the LCD and all that stuff, but it's dry. So let's grab a good battery out of our other VX55. That should be charged. If not, I have another one somewhere. Oh, no, she's dead. Well, it was worth a try, guys. I mean, that's, that's kind of the way it goes. Let's make sure the phone's... The battery's not just dead. Yeah, the battery's not dead. So, that means one of the chips burned out, which isn't really surprising. With the amount of water on that thing. Oh, oh look! It came back! 
Oh my god, I'm surprised, guys. The screen is flickering. Like I said, the LCDs usually start giving up. That's the speakerphone. Oh, I wonder if it's my passcode or if it's the um, a different one. Oh, it was. It was my passcode too. Call the uh, huh? I'm not sure if it's calling or not. Oh, huh? Well, guys, you can kind of revive it. I guarantee you, if I was to take the LCD off of this phone. And slapping this one to uh, you know get my information off of it or anything, it would probably work. Um, the backlight's still working on all the keys. The camera button still works. Volume done. Sound the voice command key works. Well, there you go, guys. And that's how you revive a phone that's been underwater for 24 hours and frozen. I wonder if that battery, you know, held a charge through all that. Let's try it. Now, a lot of the time, you know, letting this phone sit overnight, we might get some more of that water out of the uh, LCD. And the LCD might come back too. It's kind of just a waiting game at this point. We'll see. Let me try this battery in this phone. I think that battery's gone now. Oh, no. Look at that battery survived the water and everything. Let's see what percentage it's at because it was at fully charged when we put it in. It lost one or two bars underwater and frozen. But it still holds a charge. That's so crazy. I think the end key is uh kind of iffy. We'll let it dry out and then we'll check on it tomorrow and see what happens. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video of the LG VX 555 underwater. And it's still living like a trooper, technically. So, maybe it's a drop test phone. Because, I mean, the LCD doesn't work. So, we'll have to see if it comes back or not. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And stay tuned for the next.